Hey there, how you doing? Charlie Winters here with horse racing and football tips for Sunday the 19th of May. Look, May. A quick recap on Saturday's performance. Well, it was a losing day. Um, I'm not going to claim any profit whatsoever, but if you were if you were to replace the two non-runners with flukely or luckily the, the two that ran really well in another bet, you'd have had a nice day. But I, I didn't advise that and I'm not claiming any profit. So basically... The first bet was two pound profit in the end. Um, Twelve pound sixty on. I think it was fourteen pound forty back. Then I think they were just two pound fifty back on the next bet. So it was a losing day. Um, yeah, it just never really got going. So Sunday selections. I'm going to go through the horse racing and then I'm going to put the football bet in the description. If you don't normally have a football bet and you, you've got quite a bit of winnings from this week, it's going to be staking about ten pound. So um, for a bit of fun, I don't know if you I don't know if you're interested, but I shall still talk you through what I normally have. So here's the horse racing tips. So I'm not strong on any of these. I, I can see angles for all of them, but you can see by the stakes, it's a ten pence each way, look at fifteen, and a pound each way accumulator. So it's a bit of fun. So fun fiver. So the first selection is foreseeable future at twelve to one in the one forty five at Ripon, paying four places instead of three. This horse won the race last year. It was in. It had won its previous race last year, uh, so it was coming to this race slightly better form. It's gradually seemed to be finding its feet this year, but still isn't running very well. Um, it's a relatively competitive race. Um, it's got the well. It's got draw eleven of twelve, which. It's pretty much in the same position where it was last year. Towards this this railway, I believe it's favoured. It, it should run a good race. Um, to, a 12 to 1, I think, is too big. It was 85 to 40 favourite last year when it won the race. The second selection is The Only Way is Wessex. At 5 to 1 in the 5 past 2 at Stratford, paying four places instead of three. The Racing Post mentioned about this horse, it's not bred for fences. Well, to be fair, looking at the form of all of them, it looks like none of them are. Um, it's a poor race. I was looking for a couple of outsiders, but I just can't quite pick the outsiders. Um, the one by, I think it's Sarah Humphreys, and I think it was Boom Boom, who I would try to find an angle for, but it just... Those two also like to like to make the pace, so I think they could actually set up for this horse. This horse should be held up towards the back. It's Alan King, which I can never get him right, um, but it's got an okay profile, and I don't see it why it can't run okay. The next selection is Houston Calling at seventeen to two in the two thirty-five at Stratford, paying four places instead of three. This horse, and I haven't gone gone for it purely for this reason. But I did click on the jockey to find out how many mounts it got. Well, it's Charlie George. Uh, Charlie George. <laughs> it's Charlie Deutsch. Um, relatively high-ish profile northern trainer, uh, northern jockey. Um, it's only got one man, and this is it. Uh, I haven't gone for it for that reason, but it kind of helps the cause. It's a bit more reassuring. So the fourth selection, fourth and final one, is the old Ripon Specialist. Golden Melody at 9-2 in the 3.50 at Ripon, paying four places instead of three. I think it'll run a good race. It's fit. It loves Ripon. Ripon's a tricky course, uh, but this is a real battler. It, it tends to normally lose the battles, but it, it does seem a battler. Um, it can quite often travel well in the race. It can, be, it can, race, it can lead. It can race prominently. It can also be held up last. Uh, so I'm not quite sure how they'll run it. My biggest concern is... Tim Easterby has another one in it. I think it's called Just Hiss or something like that. It's it's um it's about fourteen to one. That's my concern. I think this should run its race. Um nine to two for a chance for a horse that, that could win the race. So I'm going on to the football now. So just about luckily it the screen's in the right place. So I've looked at the the, the, the football bet. The teams that have got something to play for. I've got oh, no price whatsoever. So people that are new to the football bet is, I call it goals, goals, goals. So what happens is we just want goals, goals, goals. So normally it's a £5 over two and a half goals treble, £3 over three and a half goals treble. I used to have 
and over four and a half goals shovel, but I've shelved it now. I've got it up a couple of times, and the, the biggest payday ever was from the over four and a half goals, where it made fifteen hundred pounds, uh, and that were about that were about two year ago. But I've shelved that over four and a half goals now. So the selections I've gone for is I've gone for the all three of the relegated teams because they're all playing at home, and I think what they'd like to do is let's say do it for the fans, send the fans home home happy. Um, so what I've gone for is Burnley versus Forest, Luton versus Fulham, and the bottom one is Sheffield United versus Tottenham. So the bet is it's over five. Sorry, no, it's not. It's a five pound over two and a half goals treble. It's then a three pound. Hold on. Yeah, it's then a three pound. Over three and a half goals treble, and then it's a, a one pound. Both teams to score in the first half treble. So what you want is you want in all three matches you want both teams to score in the first half. For a pound, I think it makes about eighty pound normally. And then this is all on Sky Bet by the way. And then um, the, the final bet is a one pound both teams to score in the second half. So basically. If you start off slow, like no goals in the first half, you've still got a shot, realistically, but all, all the teams to score in the second half. So, yeah, it's a pound, both teams to score in the second half. And like I said, the matches are Burnley versus Forest, Luton versus Fulham, and Sheffield United versus Tottenham. So the very best of luck. Oh, by the way, um, it's red card tomorrow. Um, you know I do like red car. Um, there's normally a, a draw bias. The problem is there hasn't been enough rain. So I'm expecting just to come down the centre. But you know this surface water. I'm expecting it to be gone by now. I'm just wondering what. I won't say damage it's caused. I wonder if um, how bad the surface water was. Um, I would have fully expected a drain by now. And as you're well aware. I've also been looking at the red car esplanade webcam. So basically. This shows you the seafront. Well, the, the course is only about two miles inwards, uh, inland, sorry. So um, I've not seen, it was a bit murky the other day, but it wasn't really wet. I'm going to have a quick look at the camera, but I'm, 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 I'm guessing the vast majority of my bet on Monday will be focused around red car. Even maybe hoping the fact that they, they do go far side. The stores are supposed to be drawn centre. Well, centre, they do also go far side. Um the runners do, um, but the draw bias normally is more significant when the rails are on the, did they call it near side? Anyway, I'm rambling now. So uh, yeah, I'll be looking at tomorrow's card. So the very best of luck, Charlie Winters over and out. Cheers, mate.